In this video, we'll be talking about acute versus chronic gastritis. This is a high yield video for USMLE step one. Stay tuned till the end. So acute gastritis refers to a sudden inflammation of the stomach lining, which can range over a few days. And in basically chronic gastritis, there is a long term inflammation of the stomach lining. Acute gastritis can happen due to irritants such as alcohol, NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, certain other medications, bacterial or viral inf inflammation, then there could be uh, stress or bile reflux. All of these can possibly cause acute or short-term inflammation of the stomach lining. Chronic gastritis mostly happens due to long-term H. pylori infection or autoimmune disorders such as autoimmune gastritis. All these things we would be talking in this video and stay tuned till the end. If you haven't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Now let's quickly get a review of the things, uh, differences between the acute and chronic gastritis. So first of all, the onset. Acute is sudden, chronic is gradual and prolonged. Duration is short term and basically duration is long term. Pain is mostly very painful because it's a short term thing but painful. In most of the chronic gastritis cases, it's less painful but kind of like a, always a intermittent pain state persists. It's more irritating in a long term basis. Let's talk about the ulceration properties. The edges are well defined and regular. In chronic gastritis, it's highly irregular and slopping. Let's talk about the exudate, that means the fluid that leaks in the nearby region. So often it's, there is significant exudate in acute gastritis and minimal level in chronic gastritis. Let's talk about associated factors. We talked about it, right? Trauma, infections, medications like NSAIDs, acute conditions, maybe stress, all of these can lead to acute gastritis. Chronic gastritis are mostly uh, associated with maybe poor circulation, ischemia maybe uh, basically H. pylori infections or sometimes autoimmune conditions. Healing time is minimal. Basically, in case of acute gastritis, it's rapid and appropriate treatment can be done. But in case of chronic gastritis, often the healing time is slow. Often it is recurrent. So long term treatment and follow up is required. Management focus. So in, or in, in terms of acute gastritis, it's an immediate cause if that is taken care of, then it would be healed. But in case of chronic gastritis, the managing the underlying cause and the recurrent infection is a challenge. Anyway, let's now delve deep into all these aspects in subsequent slides. So basically, let's talk about acute gastritis, which means inflammation of the gastric mucosa for a sudden duration. It's often erosive or it might not be uh, erosive as well. And we talked about the bunch of factors that can possibly lead to acute gastritis. One of the significant factors that lead that might lead to acute gastritis is the NSAID or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. And this is a very common kind of drug used as a painkiller. Basically, aspirin, ibuprofen, naproxen, all of these drugs. They can uh, do harm to the gastric lining by inhibiting prostaglandin E2. Prostaglandin E kind of have a protective effect in terms of the gastric mucosa. NSAID can inhibit that. So question is how NSAID cause acute gastritis? So there are several mechanisms. One of the prominent one is inhibiting prostaglandin synthesis. So this lead to mucosal injury and decreased proliferative and pro protective mechanism of the gastric mucosa. There could be also curling ulcer, I mean, which lead to severe burn and massive loss of plasma due to the fluid sh uh, shifting through the interstitial place, uh, space. There could be mucosal ischemia. That means the stomach is not re uh, getting enough amount of blood supply. So there are ischemic injuries that might also lead to an ulceration. There could be uh, involvement of the central nervous system, uh, which seen in case of Cushing ulcer. In this case, there is a hyperstimulation of the vagal uh, nerve due to an injury in the brain. And the vagal nerve stimulates the overall, uh, overall stomach 
to secrete more and more HCL. The terminal of the vagal nerve secretes more and more acetylcholine that lead to production of more and more HCL into the stomach that increases the gastric acidity and that's quite detrimental. Now, treatment option includes proper diagnosis, stages of diagnosis and where the ulcer is located. So it can be done via endoscopy. That's the best method. And there are specific ways to block these uh, changes. Few things are like antihistamines. Uh, another thing is basically uh, uh, proton pump inhibitors like these omeprazole, pantoprazole, all of these basically blocks the HCL production and thereby giving relief. Then restricting harmful agents, for example, smoking, drinking alcohol, all of these can be a good way to prevent acute gastritis. Next, we talk about chronic gastritis. One of the key cause of chronic gastritis is basically H. pylori infection. I have a detailed video on H. pylori infection, but anyway, we would quickly summarize how H. pylori might be very harmful for the stomach. So, after H. pylori enters your body, it attacks your stomach lining and this stomach lining basically protects your uh, the internal parts from the harsh HCL. So there are ulcerations throughout the stomach and it has to be understood that the ulceration starts from the antrum eventually spreads throughout the body of the stomach. Now here is the gastric mucosa that we can see. There is a thick layer of mucus. Outside that there is gastric HCL. Generally every bacteria would die in this harsh environment, but H. pylori has a mechanism to cope up. So H. pylori secretes urease. Urease buffers the pH of this uh, very uh, strong acid, gastric HCL, and thus allowing this uh, basically pathogens to survive in this uh, gastric environment. So H. pylori, has several um, uh, enzymes on the surface and pathogenic factors that help them to survive. First of all, urea gets converted into ammonia that neutralize the excessive activity. This is done by the enzyme urease. There are adhesion factors that help to adhere to the host mucosal cells and flagella help it to navigate through this thick layer of mucus. There are proteins like VAC-A, which are potent toxins, VAC-A and CAG-A actually. These are cytotoxins. So VAC-A can actually uh, basically work like adhesion molecules. Also, it can bind to receptors, which triggers gene expression, especially of those genes which lead to production of pro-inflammatory cytokines and thereby evoking inflammation in the stomach lining. Also, in severe cases, there could be cytochrome C release from the mitochondria, which might to apoptosis as well. Now, stomach lining has different type of cells. There are neck cells, parietal cells, peptic cells. Now, parietal cells are peculiar. Parietal cells are having this kind of uh, morphology. They secrete HCL. And uh, basically, they have uh, these kind of canals-like structure known as intracellular canaliculi. If we zoom into these cells, we would see there are a bunch of transporters, ion channels, etc. present on the surface of these cells. Now, there are cases which are autoimmune cases where plasma cells by mistake make antibodies against these transporters. One of the common transporters is the sodium potassium ion exchange ATPase. And when there is basically antibodies against that, that lead to autoimmune gastritis. So it, it there could be also situations where the antibodies are generated against the castle's intrinsic factor or also the antibodies are generated against the sodium potassium ion exchange pump, both leading to destruction of the parietal cells. And basically that reduce the production of Cussell's intrinsic factor. Cussell's intrinsic factor is really important for absorption of vitamin B12. So vitamin B12 is a very important vitamin for our proper physiology. Now when vitamin B12 is malabsorbed, then there could be increase in the chance of getting anemia because you, you can get a quick view in the video on vitamin b12 but vitamin b12 is really important for synthesis of the dna so obviously there could be anemia happening in these uh, conditions which is a secondary effect altogether but anyway chronic gastritis can be treated by treating the cause so first it has to be diagnosed properly urease test is a good test for h pylori 
and basically h pylori can be eradicated with a combinatorial antibody th therapy there are first line of therapy second and third line of therapy that can be performed it has to be taken care of because if h pylori infection persists for a long time it can lead to adenocarcinoma in the stomach so that is why it has to be taken care of promptly so I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can get our notes and flashcards in our Facebook or Instagram page or also in our website. So check it out. Links are all in the description. Please support our channel using Super Thanks. We produce high quality video, but we need your support badly. Otherwise, we cannot keep, keep on making these videos. Your small contribution is our motivation. See you in next video.